the workshop fabulous to have you here because on today's episode we're going to be making a pair of bolt jaw tongs. Thanks for joining me. So I need to work out what material we're going to use. This is a little wide here. This is two by half inch flat material. A little wide but we're going to use this. We'll put it in the bandsaw and we'll be able to break it down to the size that we need. Probably have a think about how much material I need first, shouldn't I? What are you looking at? I'm thinking. My powers of guesstimation are telling me that's about how much material I need for each half of the tong. Okay, so here are pieces. Let's see if these work. Great. just got some tooling ready that we're going to be using under the power hammer. These are the tongs that we're going to be working off. These fit one inch and a quarter, about 30 mil, round and square. Interesting thing about V-bit tongs, bolt tongs. With square jaws here on the diagonal, we're able to not only hold square bar on the diagonal, but also hold round. And if they're just right, you can often hold a lot of flats, as you saw me do with this pair of V-bit tongs. This particular pair of tongs made by my friend, made by my friend Steve Howell of Ballad Forge. Worth checking out his page, actually, because not only does he make amazing tongs, but he is the rivet maestro. The rivet maestro, what do I mean by that? Like rivets, industrial rivets, riveting bridges, stuff like that. Super cool, he's got some great videos of him squishing rivets. Anyway, that is beside the point. He made these tongs, but they're an inch and a quarter, and I need one inch tongs. Because in my rack here, of all the tongs, I don't actually have one inch tongs. I've got these lovely tongs, which were built to be three quarter inch tongs, and I use them as one inch tongs. But the issue is, is that when you take a pair of tongs that's built to be a smaller size and you open them up, these little V's here end up being too small. And what I love about these tongs is those V's, when seated on the square bar, they don't just grab the top corner of the square bar, they go down nice and deep over the square, and that means that we get a stunningly secure grip, which I really, really like. So, my next step is gonna be, we're gonna fill it in, and then we're gonna draw down this material, so we get a taper coming up like this. That can then all be drawn out after the fact, but this is the most crucial part because that forms the reduction in size that we need to get these bends in here for the V-bit tongs. So what we have is we have the isolation of the bit forged. We got a taper forged down. We're leaving the bit nice and chunky here and we thinned it down in that plane too. Now the next step, you'll notice we haven't chiseled in the grooves in our tongs, the, uh, the holding thing, the bit of the tongs. We haven't chiseled that in because it's gonna get damaged in the bends and the bends are the next process. I'm not gonna do the bends when it's drawn out because I want all of this strength and structural integrity back here to support and allow us bending it in the right place. So as you can see here, this is kind of what we've got. I need a bend that goes down 90 degrees here to form this bend here where the boss is. Then we need a bend that comes back around the other way, but obviously that then sets our jaw up like this. So we then need another bend back away from the jaw. Now the perfect tool to help do this is a pair of uh, bending dogs, bending forks, depends how you call it. And I, I, I'm doing this 
because it's two pieces of steel, or well, one piece of steel that's bent like this, and then you can kind of cam against it and bend your piece. In the workshop move, I have no idea where my bending forks are, so we're going to go straight to the vise, and we're just going to use the vise and uh, some kind of uh, some smart heat management to help make the bends where we need them. Okay, so I'm just finishing up the chiseling on the jaws, and you'll notice it's actually looking very much like a pair of tongs right now. Very pleased with how this is going. It's not going to take much before these are all done. Pretty difficult keeping it all centered, um, but it's certainly centered enough. As I come to the end there, what we'll now do is we'll flatten off the bottom, and we'll give it a brush. What I'm now gonna do is we're gonna take a much broader chisel that is flat across the bottom and use this to further open up the bit of the tongue. So now what I'm gonna do is we are ready for our assembly. So I'm taking a piece of 10 millimeter round steel and we're gonna hot cut off a piece that we're gonna use for the rivet. And so of course now, we're gonna take the rivet, we've heated it back up, we're gonna place it on this tool. Now that's a piece of 15 millimeter, 5 8 square bar with a hole drilled in it. Now we're using that because what that does is that supports the rivet from the back side while we rivet it from the top. I take my time. Now what we've done is we've taken one and a half times the rivet diameter. The rivet diameter, 10 millimeters, 3 eighths of an inch. And of course, one and a half times that, 15 millimeters, roughly 5 eighths of an inch. That leaves just a perfect amount of stick out for next heat. 
us to be able to then come in from the back side and rivet that over. Simply just a hole in the right size piece of steel. And so now we'll heat it up and then that with a little wriggling will loosen the rivet. And now I'm gonna take my piece of inch square bar. Oh, and I burned myself. Inch square bar. I'm gonna open up the vise and we'll give it a tighten. And that there will set the jaws to be how we want them. Ah! There we go, that vise will do a lot of what we need done to the jaw. I'll then give it a grip. And I'll have a look from the end and see how we're looking. We're gonna need some hammering to fix that. Nice and, uh, nice and straight down the diagonal though. Oh yeah! Yeah! Now I'm gonna loosen it up properly. Obviously clamping it on the rivet there had got it a little tighter. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, though it obviously is going to seem weird, I'm actually going to open up the reins so they're way away from where it is that I'm going to be able to grip it because what I'm now going to do is I'm going to bend the reins back. Okay, they bent in the wrong place. Damn it. Almost there. Ooh. Hello. Hello, Toms. Oh, yes. So these ended up not really looking too much more like, uh, not really looking too much like Ballad Forge's tongs, Steve. They actually ended up looking a lot more like an industrial tong than my friend uh, Mark Kraus always likes recommending. You've got this nice flat here at the back, which means that as steel gets hammered in this way, it's actually not opening up the tongs. In fact, it kind of goes back slightly, so it's closing the tong jaws. And I put this bend in here so that when I use a tong clip, which I often do, the way I tighten it is by forcing it up the reins, which is super handy. It's easy to get off, but it's also nice and easy to put on. You can always hammer on a tong clip. That keeps your work nice and strong and, uh, and, and nice and tightly gripped. The tongs are also a lot longer than a lot of my other tongs, which is another thing I picked up from Mark, because then you get leverage when you're working on heavier pieces. You can get away from it a little more in the gas forge. What a fun day it has been building these tongs. Oh, 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 Okay, now they're done. Ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed watching me make these bolt head tongs today, these V-bit tongs today, whatever you want to call them. I've really enjoyed it. This is actually one of my first pair of bolt head tongs. I've made all sorts of other tongs, but I guess I never really had a need to, to make them because I had them, but I finally got tired. We made some one inch tongs today. I hope you've enjoyed. Right now, as you see this episode, I'm actually in America. I'm out of the workshop. Jamie and I hustled really, really hard to get as much footage filmed up here in advance for you. So I hope you are enjoying and have been enjoying the past couple of videos. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.